Hello and welcome to our series of short recordings addressing the people, process and technology necessary to implement sustainability reporting. I am Aaron Saw. In this session, we will talk about using data and technology as enablers to produce high quality sustainability related information. Joining me in this session to help bring these important enablers to life is Ricky Cheng. Ricky is a director and the head of risk advisory at BDO Hong Kong. Now you may know data can be obtained from within or outside an organization, including its value chain and third party data providers. As such, integrity of data and the entire reporting process is imperative to producing high quality sustainability related information. In another video, we've talked about determining material information for reporting. The considerations of data and technology as enablers to support the reporting of such information are covered in stages four, five, and seven, specifically 7.2 of the sustainability reporting cycle. While you will usually engage with the sustainability reporting cycle in a clockwise manner, it's important to remember that when engaging with a particular stage, you may return to an earlier stage or one of the underpinning activities in that stage. Now, in this stage, the expertise of technology and data professionals will be crucial. Technology and data professionals will need to collaborate with professional accountants and other experts in determining the type of data required for analysis and then reporting and where the data will come from. For the organization, it's important to clearly identify the subsidiaries and the relevant value chains that form the boundary where information will be reported on. You also need to take into account the information demanded by key stakeholders for decision making which inform the scope and parameters of the data. By now, you'll notice that determining the reporting boundary and scope and parameters of the data are influenced by the risks and opportunities that could reasonably be expected to affect the organization's prospects, as well as, well as the material information to be disclosed, and these are, determining, uh, these are determined in stage three. The applicable sustainability reporting frameworks or standards such as the IFRS sustainability disclosure standards may also set out specific requirements for information to be disclosed and provide guidance. This includes the metrics to measure progress over sustainability related targets. Next, we'll move to collecting the required data. For this, consider the available sources of data. Some data may already exist in your system. Others have to be sourced externally from stakeholders in the value chain or from third-party data providers. Organizations need to consider the credibility of each source and weigh the cost over benefit. This is true, especially when considering the use of proxy data for estimates when directly measuring certain metrics is not possible or very costly. Technology and data professionals may add value here. Stage 5.2 of the cycle encourages organizations to, play, to pay close attention to how the required data will be collected. The methodology will greatly influence the success in collecting good quality data. Perhaps technology and data professionals can assist organizations in this area, especially on the following. In evaluating the technology available, keeping the process simple and using consistent methodology, maximizing the use of data collected and aligning frequency of collection with their reporting timelines. Also aligning data collection with the procurement process and finally embedding verification in the process and systems. Well, despite their best efforts, organizations might still find it necessary to engage external support to help improve processes, perform some of the data collection and analysis tasks, 
or access the data in third-party systems. Finally, we encourage organizations to have a clear strategy for using technology to meet their reporting objectives and other needs, including integration with existing systems and the scalability and flexibility of the technology to meet their future needs. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to turn to my guest to share some insights. Welcome, Ricky, and thank you very much for joining us to share your insights on this important area that enable the reporting of sustainability-related information. Reporting of sustainability-related information will inevitably require data from outside an organization. I touched upon this briefly earlier in my uh, introduction, and this may come from the value chain and even third-party system. So, uh, Ricky, can you share with us how technology and data professionals can support an organization in collecting sustainability-related data, especially those that come from along its value chain? Over to you, Ricky. Okay. Thanks, Aaron. I'm very happy to be here to share my insights. Uh, well, actually, I think um, professionals can assist in a number of ways. Uh, first of all will be the data verification. Problems usually happens when companies are collecting data from their front lines, but the frontline people misinterpreted the information requirements and require information not being provided or incorrect conversion factors are used when calculating carbon footprint, for example. We can assist them with the data verification against raw data and also generate up-to-date conversion factors for calculating carbon footprint by using automated tools. Secondly, identification of required information. This is actually refers to the scope three emission inventory. Many of the companies may not have a full understanding of each categories of the 15 scope three emission, okay? So we have established a scope three emission tool, which helps them to assess the relevance of the categories and provide them with clear guidance on information required for calculation. Thirdly, we could assist in identifying material sustainability topics. The fact that we have established a database of listed companies' ESG reporting practice and the topics. With our ESG performance assessment tool and our knowledge in ESG reporting frameworks, such as SASB, GRI, and TCFD, we'll be able to identify the gaps of ESG disclosure and advise them with material ESG topics that are relevant in the client's industry and what information will be needed for disclosure purpose. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. Uh, you touched upon some of the technology factors as well as those coming from requirements from the standards. Uh, perhaps can you talk a bit uh, can you tell us a bit more about the data characteristics and in terms of uh, the volume of data will companies of different sizes have different considerations with regards to how they collect the data? Well, actually, um, this will uh, depend on the uh, scale of uh, business operation, especially when you're talking about like uh, a small trading company um, with very um, uh, simple or just uh, a small volume of transactions, then I guess uh, they can use simple Excel spreadsheets uh, can can cater for their own purpose and their needs, okay? But when you're talking about if the companies are having a multiple jurisdiction operations and also with um, compliance requirements from different uh, jurisdictions, say uh, one from the European area and one from the uh, Asian, like in Hong Kong, and I could say that the, uh, the the data requirement for ESG disclosure could be very different. So you can see that um, there could be a big difference um, in the data collection exercise. And also given that if the companies with multiple uh, locations operations, a simple spreadsheet may not be able to serve the purpose of uh, ESG disclosure. So to solve this problem, um, actually we will uh, suggest our clients to consider using some sort of uh, uh, software with multiple access uh, capabilities and also 
uh, that can track the users, uh, 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 all the trail and also can track their changes such that we can um, locate who have uh, done the correction or, or the um, input recently and whether there are such um, exceptions that we can identify from this kind of uh, audit trail log. Okay. So um, what about the could... database that you mentioned earlier? Since like the data, there are so many data points and they're coming from different locations. Can you tell us a bit more about the database that you mentioned earlier? Yeah, uh, actually we are talking about um, uh, the database of information that we collected from the uh, listed company's ESG report. Yeah, because um, Beetle Hong Kong has been performing the um, uh, ESG reporting uh, survey in the past few years. And for the purpose of doing a survey, we have established an Excel spreadsheet okay, with over like uh, 300 uh, data points questions that we need to collect from the ESG reports for uh, analysis purpose, okay? And uh, when we are building up this kind of um, Excel spreadsheet for data collection, we have also made use of the um, programming software, say for example, Python, uh, that can enable us to do uh, lookup and also can enable some sort of automated uh, operation, say for example, uh, automatically draw the data from the uh, ESG report in PDF format from the public domain on a regular basis, such that uh, we do not need to do it on a manual basis. So this can enable our subsequent uh, assessment and also analysis of uh, ESG report uh, presentation and also disclosure information across the peers and provide relevant and um, uh, insights to our clients about, uh, say for example, in your industry, what kind of uh, material uh, ESG topics that you need to take care of. Uh, your existing disclosure level is maybe is not up to the industrial average level, or you could uh, involve uh, more information to disclose in like a social area or like a, uh, the human uh, or, or, or the uh, uh, supply chain practice, things like that. Yes. So ultimately, the success of um, whichever methodology is used is the people who will be providing inputs or data into, into the system. So can you tell us more about how do you or how can organizations convince stakeholders, especially those in the value chain, to supply it with the necessary data? Well, uh, yes. I, I believe that many of the uh, companies are having um, challenges in collecting these kind of data from the uh, value chain companies. But apart from the disclosure requirements, I think there are some commercial reasons behind that is valid, okay, for the uh, supply chain company to provide ESG related information. Uh, uh, we are aware that some of the big cops are increasingly concerned about their reputation in terms of ESG and keen to implement responsible procurement practices. As such, when procuring goods and services, they may require vendors to follow their supplier ESG code of conduct. That is, mm -hmm. the big corp may conduct ESG assessment over their vendor's ESG practice on a regular basis, or even carry out on-site verification to certify its compliance. Therefore, vendors may need to have the ESG information ready for such checking. Secondly, shared value and goals. Mm -hmm. uh, value chain companies may have their own business goals and pursue on certain UNSDG's goals, or even reducing carbon footprint together with the company. So companies with shared values, they may come together sharing their common interests and cooperate together to share ESG information, practical experience, and also solutions. So this may enhance collaboration with big corps or even develop strategic alliance for future business cooperations. So thirdly, becoming a qualified supplier. Nowadays, many corporations are required uh, their vendors to be evaluated by an independent assessment firm to ensure that they have obtained a certain ESG score before accepting them as qualified or approved vendors. As such, vendors are required to have these ESG information ready for assessment purpose. Yes. Thank you very much, Ricky, for bringing these important enablers to life with your insightful comments. Data and technology are important, but 
often difficult to visualize how they will contribute to reporting sustainability related information, especially for companies who are just at the start of their journey. Before we end, I'd really like to reiterate an important message that is to use data and technology as enablers to produce high quality sustainability related information. There is no one size fit all model. And so we encourage you to take time to work through the suggested processes of our sustainability re reporting cycle. Then design processes that are appropriate to your organization and implement them. I leave you with two actions. Number one, please watch the other videos. And number two, to workshop the areas that we have discussed today. To help you, there are questions available at the end of this recording, and you can use them in your, in this, in your discussion, your organization, or by educators in their learning programs. And with that, I'd like to thank Ricky and to thank you for watching. Goodbye. Thanks. Bye-bye.